When you think about justice, what comes to mind? You might be tempted to reduce it to the enforcement of the rule of law or a particular area of injustice that you're passionate about. And all of that, of course, is part of it, but the ancient Eastern biblical conception of justice was very broad in scope and incredibly deep and rich in meaning. It's multidimensional, incredibly comprehensive. We couldn't begin to sketch fully what that vision of justice is that God imagines for us, but let's boil it down to three things that you see in this Isaiah passage. First of all, it was an overt care and passion and love for the marginalized, the poor, the oppressed. He said in the opening words of Jesus' ministry quoting this, Isaiah is saying that he's come to preach good news to the poor, freedom to the captives. This, this includes literally the poverty stricken that God is passionate about. We've talked a lot about that actually in the last year at City Church. It's for those who are without power, those who are living on the margins of life, those who are literally captives, literally the prisoners, but also metaphorically because of the systems of injustice in our world. That's the first category. Secondly, there is a very internal, emotional dimension to it. The brokenhearted, verse uh, one and two, and to comfort all who mourn. Uh, I mentioned last week that um, I lost my mom recently and was home in El Paso for her memorial service. It was an, an Anglican church there. I got to preach the sermon at my mom's memorial service and the Anglican church gives a list of scripture passages that you can choose from. And this was one of those passages. I think it was actually first in the list and we chose this passage. I mean, it's interesting because we map out our sermons way in advance at City Church, so I think this passage on this day was chosen like last May or June. Um, but in, you know, in God's design of things, preaching my first sermon as I'm trying to grapple with the loss of my mother, enormous gap uh, in my life, it's this passage <laughs> that's there. And it is one of enormous comfort to me personally, and it has been to people throughout the ages. It, it's talking about emotional healing to those who are suffering loss in some way in their life. Uh, a third area that you see is that it's not, it's not just dealing with targeted areas of injustice in the world, it's not just dealing with an internal uh, issue of injustice, but it's actually a very positive vision for the renewal of culture itself. He says in verse four that they will renew the ruined cities. God doesn't say I'm gonna come and take you out of this world and get you away from this world that's going to hell, but we've got a vision, a breathtaking vision for the renewal of this world. And you think of it in terms of a tapestry. I've heard it described this way before. You see a tapestry, a beautiful work of art, and and you tend to just view it as a composite, as a whole. But of course, a tapestry is composed of thousands of different threads of fabric, intertwined, inextricably linked to one to another. And any one given thread is utterly interdependent on maybe thousands of other threads. The more interdependent, the more tightly woven together this thread is, the more beautiful the fabric is, the more, the more powerful an impression it leaves you. God designed the world, billions of different threads, to be inextricably, interdependently intertwined. And all of, the, all of the systems of the world, all of the individuals, you and I included, are part of this tapestry. And the, to, to the degree to which we are interdependent, intertwined, then the world and each of us flourishes. From Isaiah's perspective, he lives in a world that's frayed, 
coming apart at the seams. And yet from his prophetic vantage point, way up high, he's able to see hope. He's able to see the reweaving of that tapestry back together so that there is social, racial, economic, interpersonal, emotional, cultural flourishing. 